Hello and welcome to video number 10 of the Foucault's Pendulum for Advanced Experiments. Today's video will be looking at the dynamic testing of our glass and our commercially purchased plumb bob. They're the two plumb bobs you would have seen in the last video. The dynamic testing uh, experiments on our plumb bob, looking at weight distribution and the shape of, dis of the plumb bob, how it affects the plumb bob's motion. We're now, our plumb bob is now becoming migrating into a pendulum. So it's no longer a static device, it's now going to become a motion device. So things change. Everything is changing now and the shape and weight distribution, everything is coming under laws of motion. Probably another way of explaining it would be, say we were to go to a Swiss clockmaker, someone who could make a, ma a magnificent machine, precision, you've seen these uh, Swiss clocks, absolutely gorgeous pieces of engineering and you ask them to make you a device that could measure time. Now you would have something, you had six million dollars, just make me a timepiece, it would be gorgeous, it would be perfect, it would almost perfect time, mechanical time to measuring device. However if you ask them to also measure motion in, with this device now the challenge has increased by a factor of a thousand. So what you would ask them then is, oh, would you like you to make me a time and motion device that can measure that this part of the whiteboard is travelling faster or slower than this part of the whiteboard. Now it'll be interesting to see how far your six million dollars would go with that challenge. So that's also our challenge. We have to make a precise measuring device that can measure the difference between that and that in speed. So let's see how we go. So now we'll so get back to our experiments and here we go. So here we have the glass pump bob uh, on the dynamic tester. The dynamic tester has been running for possibly 30 minutes now and the whole system is stabilized. The glass plumb bulb has caught up to the same velocity as the cable and the bottom of the plumb bulb has got about a 5mm oscillation or wobble and there's a 5mm sway left and right if you just notice that gap between the glass plumb bulb and that indicator. The cable has an oscillation midway which I'll show you later. I can zoom in on that hopefully. Now this is over a 2 meter length remember so the plumb bob in Paris is 67 meters long so I can imagine there'd be somewhat of an error although we've never seen a dynamic test of the system in Paris um, we can only believe that they have the system perfect because the system is perfect and it indicates the true spin of the earth according to what they um, demonstrate. So we can only reproduce our system here and um, see what results we have. Alright, what I'll do now is I'll go halfway up the cable and just show you that oscillation and then we'll go to the top bearing and that slip magnetic coupling system and there is a slight oscillation up there too which I shall also show you. So there's our orange cable with the oscillation. If you can just notice it, reference that against that gap in the cupboard at the background. There's a slight oscillation or, or wobble. And now I'll zoom in on the top so here I am at the top, for those people interested in the magnetic coupling, more of a side on view. That tip is just in the centre of the interface between the cable and the magnetic coupling with the motor drives, for those interested. Here we are looking at the top magnetically coupled bearing. There's a slight wobble which is a result of the overall 
uh, two meter length inconsistencies in angles and velocities which will be eliminated with uh, universal joints at either end however Foucault didn't use a universal joint at either end so we have to reproduce his system I'll just zoom back down and just show you the whole length now as we go down, going down the cable down the cupboard down to the bottom here at the floor alright so that's the whole variable system and uh, hopefully uh, we can now do a swing and just see what the pendulum does so here we have the commercially purchased plumb bob I think the thing to notice is there's a more pronounced wobble here at the bottom and obviously at the top also to note is the sway is increasing this has been running for about five minutes and I've had to move the indicator away because this eventually will hit the indicator so the sway as the, obviously this wobble is increasing the sway there's no doubt about that unlike the glass plum bob which although it was running for quite a while it never swayed any more than a between 5 and 8 millimetres and I would say on average 6 millimetres sway this is a very important if this uh, pendulum was if this pump I was to use as a pendulum uh, for a 24 hour period the sway would would be a critical um, factor in that time it would be so pronounced that it would create errors the, surprisingly enough the cable has about the same amount of uh, wobble as the glass plumb bob both centre point and at the top so I haven't bothered to fiddle on those so that's about all we can deduce from this we're also remembering that uh, I did modify the top of this commercially made plumb bob to interface to the cable which I added some extra accuracy I believe so my gut feeling is that these commercially made plumb bobs, although accurate for, as a plumb bob, I don't think they're suitable for a pendulum, and certainly not for a Foucault pendulum. And also the fact that they're made from a metal, a ferrous metal, so they are magnetic. I think that's enough, uh, and I might just add more, one more experiment. So I've added uh, a universal joint here at the bottom, there's also one at the top, and I think what it's done is uh, certainly reduced the sway, but now the, uh, the air has been transferred more to the tip down here, and there's more of a wobble. However, the sway is reduced a lot, which is the, I think is more of an issue, swaying is more of an issue than this wobble. It's hard to say. Uh, however, we're not allowed to use these universal joints because Foucault never used them, so uh, we have to use his system. Okay, well, uh, just a little bit extra I thought I'd add. So another useful experiment may be uh, to look at the dynamic forces of a plumb bulb. So here we just have a normal plumb bob doing its job perfectly just as a weight to indicate a central point. However, when we uh, spin the plumb bob or move the plumb bob and in our application becoming a pendulum those weight distributions and centre of gravity become very important. So just let me climb to the top here and put power on and you'll see what, what happens when we have our weight distribution's wrong. Okay, I think we've seen enough.
So you can see why we have to have our center of gravity and mass, sorry, of our plumb bulb pretty well worked out. Another experiment you may be interested in, I've placed a shim of glass from a microscope slide between the magnetic coupling and the spindle motor. And that wobble you're seeing is the magnetic coupling trying to locate the center, which it cannot do now because there's a piece of glass in between it and the center detent that it would normally physically located to. So what I think I've done is transferred the wobble from the bottom to the top and that's the actual error in the system which should be over that, over that 2000 millimeter length is the combination of many things. I'll just go down to the bottom. Very little wobble in the cable. That's me wobble. That's me moving. But I can't see any wobble as such. Now back down to the plumb bob at the bottom. The swaying is the initial sway that I never corrected. Uh, I should have stopped it swaying more. That's just a sway that was always there when I started.